Welcome to another episode of Biz Takeouts, Biz Community Soundbite Size News to Go, made possible by the Frederick Naumann Foundation in partnership with Green Cape, a nonprofit organization that drives the widespread adoption of economically viable green economy solutions from South Africa. I'm your host, Angie White, and I'm excited to introduce today's guests. Kirsten Barnes is the project lead for SA Plastics Packed Green Cape, and Kevin O'Brien is the Group Sustainability Risk Executive for SPA. And today they will be discussing the Plastics Pact and the vision for a circular economy for plastics in South Africa. Welcome, Kirsten and Kevin. Thanks so much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Great. So jumping straight into our questions, Kirsten, could you please explain what the South African Plastics Pact is and where it originates from? Okay, thanks, Angie. The South African Plastics Pact is a voluntary collaboration of businesses and other organizations who've identified a common problem, which is the way we design, make, use, and get rid of the plastics in our society. So we've identified this common problem, and therefore we've committed to work together on a solution. So we've designated or we've put in place bold 2025 targets to create a circular economy for plastic in South Africa, with an initial focus on plastic packaging. So these targets are firstly, taking action on problematic and unnecessary plastic packaging, through removal, redesign, innovation, or alternative delivery models, which can include reusable packaging. Our target two is that 100% of our plastic packaging across all our members will be reusable, recyclable, or compostable. And then target three is 70% of our plastic packaging nationally is effectively recycled. And we love this target three because this is a national target. So this is all plastic packaging nationally. And this means as the SA Plastics Pact, um, you know, we've come together, we're a collective, we have a great vibe really amongst the members, we're working together on a really big complex issue, but we have to look beyond ourselves, we have to work with the broader landscape. And then our target four is a 30% average recycled content across all plastic packaging of our members. So what we do is we bring together members from across the plastics value chain. So this includes the virgin polymer producers, the packaging manufacturers, brand owners, retailers and Kevin is on the call, he's the chair of our steering committee. So we, we're very pleased to have that drive from one of our, our top retailers. And we also have recycling collectors and sorters, um, as well as recyclers. And then we have our supporting members to the SA Plastics Pact. And these are key players in the landscape that can change policy, legislation, can really help drive um, a circular economy and help our members achieve their targets. So these include our National Government Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries, the City of Cape Town Municipalities, all our plastics producer responsibility organizations, Petco, Polyco, the ESA Vinyls Association, as well as Polystyrene Association. Um, we have the informal collector body, African Reclaimers Organization, who are key partners as well as the South African Plastic Recyclers Organization, among others. But where we really came from, that the Plastics Pack model was initiated by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, which is a global think and action tank focused on the circular economy. And they partnered with RAP in the UK, who are the Waste and Resources Action Program, to initiate the first national Plastics Pact. And that was in 2018. Both organizations have since worked to grow that Plastics Pact network to eight national pacts, and one regional pact in the European economic area. So we're the first uh, pact in Africa. Um, the first developing country pact was, was Chile, um, who pipped us to the post. They, they launched before we did. Um, and there are a number of other pacts which are currently developing, including two in Africa, Kenya and Senegal. Um, and there's also the Malaysian pact, which is publicly made known their intention to launch. And the next regional pact we have under development is the Australia, New Zealand and Pacific Islands Pact. So that there's a lot happening in this space. And what's great at being part of that global network is we can access so many different insights from experts globally, from developed to developing country citizens. And then ourselves as a South African plastic pact. We would development and the UN environmental program. And so they took that this to development phase, the SA Plastics Pact, very much a local development. We have tested global network partners 
that we're very much a dance of African economy. And we took the implementation of the pact from that development team on launch um, on the 30th of January in this very strange year of 2020. Um, and all of those players are still very much involved in the further development of our pact, and we're very grateful for that. Wow, awesome. So definitely a lot of a lot going on overall. <laughs> Tell me, Kristen, why why do we need this in our country? And um, that's a very good question. And I think um, plastic pollution and its negative effects have been a, a really hot topic. And what I love about models like the SA Plastics Pack is it gives us a really pl practical way to address those issues. So we're able to, to take that visual stimulus because it's so evident in SA. We see plastic littered around our beautiful country. I mean, sadly, even plastic bags on fences have been called our national flower. They're found in our waterways with negative effects, clog uh, urban drainage systems. And we've all seen the emotive pictures of the effects of plastics on our marine life. Also to note in South Africa, we have a relatively high per capita plastics waste generation relative to other developing countries. And coupled with that, because of our developing country setting with a vast areas of, of a sort of ground to cover in terms of service delivery, we do also have limited coverage of waste collection services. So 29% of household waste is not formally collected and 30% of household waste is inadequately disposed of even if it is collected. And coupled with that is that we have limited landfill airspace. And you know, why are we putting resources, material resources, why are we putting them in a hole in the ground? Why aren't we rethinking the way that we, we take, use and dispose of our resources? So we do need to change the way we, we handle plastics, we conceive of our plastic products and handle them. So we, we want to move away from the linear take, way, take, make and waste model to a circular economy for plastics in our country. So that's where we see our plastics looped in our economy through multiple lifetimes. And this has economic, it has social implications in terms of increased job creation. And we've got good um, data to back that up, as well as environmental benefits. So in a circular economy, we do recognize the value of our plastics in terms of protecting our food, preventing food waste, delivering products. And we, we could even look at different ways of delivering products. So we, we could reduce some of the plastics that are used, but we're really focusing on designing out waste and the negative effects of plastics on our society and our world. And we will see um, great benefits from this in our country. It sounds really amazing. Um, I really, really hope we can get to a point where we have a lot less plastic. <laughs> Kevin, I'm going to direct my next question to you. Please, can you tell us who some of the PACT members are? Thanks very much, Angie. Yes, I, so I suppose just collectively, we've got uh, business members. We can say we've got a, a, a total of about 23 of them and supporting members, we have 17. So just some of the idea, I'm not going to read through all of them. Maybe highlight from each category. And um, obviously for those people who don't get mentioned, I, Really hope they don't think I've left them out by anything other than I can't go through them all. So from a business point of view, we've got organizations like Berry Astropack, we've got Pix, uh, Distel, Extrupet, Impact, Pick and Pay, Spa, who I happen to work for, Tiger Brands, Tuffy, Unilever, Woolworths, and a host of others. And then um, as supporting members, uh, Kirsten's mentioned a couple of, of those, the city of Cape Town being one. ARO, the African Retailer, uh, sorry, Reclaimers Organization, really important uh, supporting member uh, for government through the Department of Environment, Fisheries, uh, Petco, Plastic South Africa, Polico, the Polystyrene Association, uh, WWF, who's one of our founding members, uh, is also within that and a very important partner to us, and RAP, and Kirsten's mentioned RAP from the UK, um, who, who provided an incredible amount of support as well from a thinking point of view and a guidance point of view to the side from plastics pack. So yeah, basically that's it. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've tried to just summarize some of them, not giving you to all, but a really good spread of uh, organizations within South Africa mm -hmm. and across the plastics value chain who have come together uh, to, um, to, to support the South African plastics pack and it's a pretty important endeavor in what we're trying to do within the country. Thanks. 
Definitely, and a, a lot of big names in there, and uh, I hope we can just keep adding to that list. Um, I think it's yes. important for that list to keep growing. Yeah. Absolutely, and if I could just very quickly, Andrew, I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, Kirsten and, and, and Green Cape have done an incredible amount of work over the past while to, to attract more members to that, and that's a constant uh, um, uh, sort of aim for us as the steering committee, because the more people we get involved, the more opportunity we have to, to, to impact the significant change that needs to take place to meet the targets uh, which we have set for ourselves. Definitely. Right, Kirsten, you recently had a member conference and launched the roadmap to 2025. So tell me, what does this roadmap mean for the industry? Thanks, Angie. The, the roadmap, it really gives clarity on our journey to 2025. So under each target, we've looked at specific outcomes and associated activities by which we aim to achieve our 2025 targets. And the reason we've made this journey publicly available is to show our members are clearly demonstrating their commitment with practical next steps. So sometimes there can be some claims, there can be um, much talk and a, a sort of greenwashing approach to some of these sustainability issues. But what our members are saying is we're serious about this journey and this is how we're going to achieve our targets. So, and the idea also with being public is that we'd love to draw other companies on the journey with us as Kevin just referenced. So we, we recognize that these are very bold targets. These are ambitious targets. This is not something that any one organization, any one company can achieve on their own. And in fact, even for us as a, as a dynamic and a strong grouping in the SA Plastics Pact, it's not something that we can achieve alone either. So we really do need to inspire and draw more players along with us on this journey. And I think it's also key that we communicate into policymakers what is possible in terms of a circular economy for plastics in South Africa. And we've already seen really um, good engagements and discussions with policymakers across a number of departments. And we see um, people asking good questions and we are also seeding research and studies to back up in the local South African context, what is the potential in the circular economy for South Africa? So we have really inspiring um, initial data and initial insights, and there's more to come. I can't wait to see what else is to come. It's, it's gonna be an exciting next couple of years for sure. Okay, moving on to our next question. Kevin, can you tell us from SPA's perspective, what actions does the pack drive and how are you making sure that this makes a real difference? And yeah, that's a great question. And, and I think it's, uh, um, I think our involvement with the Siphon Plastics Pact as one of the founding members really steered our organization uh, in a direction that it wasn't going in. So, you know, we've um, you know, the hype around plastic and doing away with all plastic, et cetera, um, was around. And it's a type of thing which parts of our organization pursued. But the reality is, as Kirsten mentioned, you know, plastic is not all bad. Is, there is responsible plastic, responsible way of going about uh, plastic, the recycling of it. And the whole circular economy thinking is incredibly important. And when you look at it from that point of view, you understand that if you take something out of a system, it has impact everywhere. And, uh, you know, we live in a country where, uh, where, where employment is critically important, where care for our environment is critically important, and where innovation is critically important to be able to address all of these things. So from a SPA point of view, having, having tripped along in a, in, in a certain fashion, uh, being part of the plastic pack and the guidance provided through the targets, we went back over the last probably last eight, nine months, and we've reviewed how plastic and the targets in the terms of the cycling plastic pack, how that is going to impact our business and how we can incorporate and embed it into our strategic thinking. Because it's really important that it doesn't stand on its side. It can't stand as an issue outside of our business. It has to be embedded, uh, integrated within our business. And so you know, we've got, and I won't take you through all of it, but we've got a number of focus areas in terms of our strategic thinking. So one of them being putting the consumers at our heart. So um, well, let, me, let me rather start with, and, and Kirsten mentioning about inspiring, and our, our purpose as an organization is to inspire people to do and be more. That's what SPA's purpose is. And, and one of the key areas to focus should be sacrosanct to us. 
So whatever we put our name onto, it needs to have the integrity that we believe it should have because that's, the, that's our future. So when you look at the integrity of plastic packaging, whatever it might be, it's really important that it meets certain criteria. And as a result of the, the targets that are involved in the plastic pack, we have just produced, interesting enough, and Kirsten, I'll send this to you as well, we've just produced our packaging guidelines. And it's very much driven by trying to ensure that we play a significant part in meeting the targets that the Southern Plastic Pack has set out. So it has, a, it, it has had a significant impact on the way in which SPA looks at packaging and how we have integrated the thinking behind uh, uh, a circular economy behind the uh, uh, you know the, the whole plastics pack that, how, how it works embedded that into our business to ensure that we develop that we deliver on that. So it has been a uh, a wonderful opportunity for us to take work that has been done in in the world around plastics, brought into for the South plastics pack, and brought it within our achieve within our strategy as opposed to, well, the sustainability department will have to worry about X. This is part of our business strategy and a lot of that's got to do with work uh, that we've involved in the South African plastic So there's a lot that goes into it and I'm sure if a lot, of com lot more companies adopt this approach, um, we'll be in a really, really great place in a couple of years. So well done to SPA for taking that initiative and going forward and inspiring the rest of the industry. And then lastly, Kirsten, very important. Please explain how people can get involved. Thanks, Angie. Um, yes, so you can go to our website. So www.saplasticspack.org.za. So please go and engage with the website. There's information there on our targets and the actions that we move towards. You'll find our roadmap on the website. And also on the, the contact form, you'll find out more about um, membership details. And please fill in the contact form and we can be in contact with businesses who handle plastics at some point in the operation, as well as with any organizations with a national footprint who could help us in terms of changing the landscape towards a circular economy for plastics. Um, so we do encourage, please be in contact with us. We're happy to discuss um, the aspects and exactly how we're moving towards achieving our targets and what that might mean for you as a business. What sort of value do we see? And Kevin's referred to some of the values SPA has already seen in being part of our collaborative and our collective. And um, we, we were able to boost each other's actions and learn more about each other's spaces. And I think breaking down of that, those sort of barriers and understanding between our um, packaging manufacturers and the brand owners, the retailers, the recyclers, being able to share the challenges within those spaces has really been very valuable in helping our members make the relevant changes. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kirsten and Kevin. I'm really excited to see what the next couple of years hold. Um, you guys are doing amazing work. So thank you and well done. And that brings us to the end of another show with thanks to the Friedrich Naumann Foundation and Green Cape for making it possible. Those stakeouts, take it where you like it, when you like it, how you like it. Bye for now.